And welcome to Legends of the Drowned Isles, Campaign 2, The Great Confusion. This is a homebrew D&D 5th Ed campaign, where the world is Omatia and nothing is certain, because I created all that stuff and I'm not really sure. Uh, I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One, host and GM of this game. To my left are my players. Well, actually, technically below me on the screen, but starting on the left with Pat. Hi, my name is Pat. I'm playing Silas Marsh. Uh, I guess current uh, horror house goer. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Marie, and I'm playing Annie, who isn't really scared, but also hasn't seen anything directed at her yet. Hi, I'm Nax, and I'm playing Medric, half orc cleric. And I had a, a, witty, a witty thing to say, and I just lost it. At some point, we, we have to introduce your character as the Burning Man. Just yeah. you know, <laughs> the original Burning Man. Or Patrick follower, can have his the, own music festival. Follower of the original Burning Man. That's it. I'll have to have a Burning <laughs> Man festival now for the, for the, uh, the God of the Sun. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, let us get ourselves uh, a little reminder of what happened previously. We are currently still in Yuri of 17, or 17th of Yuri, I should say. Following their friend Silas's impulsive decision to head into the haunted House of Mirrors and egged on by the mustachioed hype man, the gnome Willoweth the Mysterious, Annie and Medric, Medric entered the strange corridor of mirrors. All three were swept through the dark door, passed through some strange void, and were reunited in a small room of checkered stone. A strange voice greeted them, and they discovered a horrifying creature floating in one corner. A beholder, already a strange sight, but this one also sported an outrageous bow tie just below its lower lip. It had introduced itself as Talzek Riva, their host and guide, and after a few tests by Silas also seemed not to be an illusion. Riva told them that, should it prove too much for them, they could call for an exit from the haunted house at any time, and one would likely, possibly, maybe, oh, well, we're not entirely sure, but it should show up. The three of them could also ask three questions of Riva, which Silas immediately asked a question about, using up one. The group was given a choice of two different halls, to visit the Doom of Uncertainty, or Certain Doom. The group chose Certain Doom, which led them to a tunnel with a light at the end. Along the tunnel walls were various strange sights, including what appeared to be the skeleton of a dragon, only slightly mobile. Eventually, the tunnel opened up to a small room, where three cells contained some familiar people, barred behind heavy portcullises. Dr. Marigold, Melora Cartwright, and a barely, f and a barely familiar half-orc bartender. Three crystals sat atop pedestals in the room, and the group discovered that through manipulating them, they could cause ghostly beings to cross the room, potentially putting themselves and their and the prisoners in danger. But they realized that causing the ghosts to collide with each other annihilated them. When the ghostly invaders were gone, the room inverted, rolling over to release the portcullises and the prisoners, and to reveal an exit. Through this exit, they were transported to another room, one much more like a cave, filled with small mechanical spiders and webs. Among the webs, there were occasional odd ringing sounds. Looking around, they soon discovered several gravestones, most with familiar names, all bound with chains and a strange-looking lock for what for the, that seemed to change when Annie tried to pick it. The spiders seemed mostly the same and ambled about with any concern for their guests, but a few, however, were made of green-tinted copper, which soon proved to be the source of the ringing sounds. They had bells hung from clasps around their necks, with keys as the clappers. After skirmishing with the spiders, the group gathered the keys, then worked out which lock went to which key. An opening revealed itself, and the group passed through another passage to another room. This one was large, and the floor was studded with purple crystals, much like, and in fact a perfect image of, Cathron's lair. The room was the right size, and at the far end of the room sat the Gyna Sphinx herself, perched on her altar. Between them and the altar, however, were three tall crystals, each with a vague figure inside. Looking closer, they recognized the people encased in translucent stone. In one, it seemed to be Molly, the lost wife of Silas. 
In the middle, the stout, proud figure of the late flamekeeper Tidewell, and in the right, a middle-aged man dressed in the tabard of the city guard. From the other end of the room came Catherine's booming and somewhat disappointed voice. I have been watching and waiting. I have, I have been learning and understanding. You have not been completing what I asked of you. You have let the dead overcome you. And that's where we begin. In fact, I will switch over to the map so you can see what this looks like. Once more, the reminder that the big eye in the middle of the screen is actually my point of view character for displaying things on the map. Although, I think I hinted that in this case, the eye is actually visible strangely in the room itself for fun. What would you like to it do? It is. I think she'd also said something about destroying our past, didn't she? Uh, I believe that, yeah, I didn't want to emphasize too much on the line because it was kind of stepping in here, but um, I have the actual line right here. Um, I just wrote down, hear Catherine's voice is disappoint. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that is fair. Um, for now, however, you are a part of the past to be erased, I think was what I had intended to write to 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 say whether I actually said it that way or not because sometimes I improv. Um, so you see Catherine on her altar, looking forward at all of you, gazing down from her higher height. There is some disappointment in her face. There is some some concern as well, and you see these figures in these crystals ahead of you. Do you look closer at them? I'll walk up to uh, the Flamekeeper Tidewell one. Okay. Is it actually as, her? Or? Well, as you move closer, you notice that the figure is not static inside the stone, but seems to turn and regard you. Uh, it looks you up and down, and um, a wry smile crosses one side of her face as she looks at you and says, You've grown. You look a bit brighter than before. And she kind of gestures towards your eyes. I do. The last time I saw you, you were burning. I thought you were in the arms of Ignis. I am? I Did something not, pull you? I know not how I come to be here, to be honest. It's an unusual sensation, a strange feeling. Once I was passing from the mortal world, and then I was in the ever flame itself, and now I'm here. Tell me, how are you? Uh, not too bad, except for this uh, confusing place we're in. It was a carnival, around. and there's a haunted house of mirrors and we stepped in or Silas stepped in and we followed him and a giant floating creature creature with a huge eyeball large mouth a bunch of other eyeballs on its stocks y yeah I it was a trip sounds intriguing I don't remember the Tidewell's voice so pardon me if it's changed a bit it's been a little while yeah <laughs> And I'll just explain how we came up here, basically. Or came down here. Out here? Who the fuck knows where we are? <laughs> <laughs> um, she listens intently. It sounds like quite a journey. But I think your journey is not done yet. And she kind of looks back. And you get the sense that from wherever she's looking from, um, she doesn't see the details around you that you see. She kind of strains and looks back towards the place where Catherine is still still standing or still sitting. I sense more going on here. Tell me, is the world still safe? Well, safe-ish. For now, maybe. Something 
and she seems to trail off for a second. I'm and still... there's a sound of, of a deep booming. And the whole room kind of shudders slightly. Some rocks fall from the ceiling and clatter down upon the stones. I'm still working to drive away the darkness. Uh, Catherine, Catherine? Are you actually here? I am actually everywhere and nowhere. I'm... And there's a hesitation. I'm not sure. And she looks around as if seeing her surroundings for the first time. This is not what I was dreaming. This is not... And there's another boom and a shake and more rocks tumble from the ceiling what were you dreaming i was looking at the puzzle of the world the broken puzzle and trying to figure out how it could be put back together with pieces missing and then she kind of shakes her head and there's this weird sort of quick, slow motion. Like she moves re in, in reverse order from where she actually is. This sort of trick you see in, in movies a lot these days where there's sort of this switch of motion and then kind of rigidly comes back. But I'm disappointed in you. And she Why? steps forward a little bit. We got a little sidetracked, but uh, things, bad things kept happening. Bad and I looked things. at my companions for backup. <laughs> it's like, yeah, the, the sea devil attack. And there's this, uh, I'll start to say ta uh, the name we should not say. That came back. Creepy portals and rifts opening in the woods. You start sort of weaving a path forward and looking back and forth and moving back and forth. We just guessed it was something that was strange enough and not normal enough to look into. That it might be related to everything else going on. You mentioned puzzle pieces. Can you figure it out? And I ask this, like, not condescendingly, but just, like, legit, like, can you help us? <laughs> puzzle pieces? She seems confused. What puzzle pieces? You know, These the ones things. you were just talking about. And she moves closer to the one on the left, the one that contains Molly, which, from your perspective, um, Medric, you can see that the woman moves inside the, the uh, crystal. Um, Silas, please describe Molly. Hmm. Well, let's see if I can find her picture. Um... It's been a while since I looked at it, but what I remember, she was a uh, strong, relatively muscular young lady, uh, as befits uh, the daughter of a blacksmith with, I think, greenish hair, blondish greenish hair. Okay. How would she normally be dressed? Hmm. Just normal clothes. I would assume probably something related to uh, going out on the boats. Okay. So uh, sort of a a, a well worn tunic and probably some uh, some heavier uh, trousers. Kind of looking, and she's kind of watching both Catherine and looking back at you. Uh, Medric, uh, 
uh, a little bit uh, concerned and confused. Probably an apron too. Okay. Well, the fishing boats have it for because uh, if well any of the ones where you've got to cut up fish or whatnot. Sure. Catherine oh, reaches out with one large paw mm. and scratches the back of the crystal. It resonates in this strange sort of way. Small cracks form around its base. Perhaps the past needs to be unleashed. Another shudder and shake, and the room seems to tilt ever so slightly. Not a huge amount, just enough to make you stumble slightly where you stand. Uh, Silas, who hasn't gotten any closer to it, says, leave them alone. Unleashed how? And Catherine kind of moves over from where she was standing. The past should be left alone, or it should be integrated into the present. And she walks and stands behind um, the flame keeper's uh, stone. This time, instead of scratching along it, she puts a paw on the front, or on the back of it, I should say, and gives it ever so slightly a push. And you see the whole thing kind of teeter and waver slightly. May I make an insight check? Does this sound like, this doesn't sound like something in line with what Cathron has been telling us. You certainly can make an insight check. Um... Insight. Uh, that is a 16. There's nothing in the voice itself which sounds wrong. It's clearly her voice. Um, and sometimes she seems to be distant when she's speaking as if she's she's uh, in the past, as if she's her mind is way far away as she speaks and her voice is only an afterthought to make sure that the people in front can actually hear what she says. But there's a sense of menace and curiosity that is not exactly what Catherine normally espouses. But for that moment, that moment before she leapt off the altar and seemed to be herself for a moment, speaking about dreams and confusion and the puzzle, What happens if the crystals break? And she moves over behind the third of the crystals, this one with someone dressed as a guard from Elf Otter. Um, what would you rather do? Would you rather... I can't remember Catherine's voice either. <laughs> um, I think it was, yeah, a little bit different. What would you rather do? Yes. <laughs> would you like to get rid of the past? Relive the past and change it? Or bring it with you into the future? And this time putting one paw on the... Uh, actually kind of reaching out and hitting the side of the crystal. And it kind of vibrates slightly. And you see the guard inside kind of shake and, and get uh, to his his feet or keep to his feet it looks like he was almost knocked over inside you don't hear anything from the other two but you do we see it looks like they're gesturing and, and speaking we, we can't change the past that just doesn't happen we can't remember the past because some memories have been ripped from our minds and you told us the past should be forgotten do you have different orders for us or something or As far as I know, you wanted us to make sure that the past remained forgotten? You're directly contradicting what you've told us to do. She kind of walks around, starts walking towards you guys. Am I? The past is the present. The future is the present. We all carry everything, all the time. And we make of the moment 
what we can. And she seems to go quiet in contemplation as she starts stalking towards uh, Annie. Slowly, non-threateningly, but... Um, and kind of almost wistfully, picking her way very carefully around the the rather uh, sharp rocks that clutter the cluster the the floor. All right, this is getting way too philosophical for me. And uh, you said there was a few rocks that fell from the ceiling earlier. Mm -hmm. I'll pick one of those up. See, like, is it a real rock? Does it feel like a real rock? Get it feels solid. It feels like a regular rock, not dissimilar to the rocks of the cave where Cathron exists. Cathron stalks a little closer to Annie. Cathron walking is about well, almost 10 feet tall. The bottom half, the sort of uh, cat part of it, is nearly to your shoulders, and then there's an entire torso up above it. Um, I don't move and more or less very confidently stand my ground. And as she moves closer, you sense a sort of weird uh, shuddering that's happening with her limbs as she's moving. All of you have had cats. You know that occasionally they seem to want to stretch their limbs, and when they reach forward, there's a sort of shake and shudder as they're doing so. It's, it seems to be almost uncertain, but yet you know it was deliberate. That's sort of what this, this is, and for a moment you dismiss it as that, until you notice the, the facial expression also shifting. Something is not right. This is here and not here. There are more holes in the puzzle than I thought. And the room shakes violently. And you see from out of the floor up, a, up in front of you, the ground start to erupt. And there's a mosquito right in front of me. Dang, you little bugger. Sorry. Uh, mosquito comes out of the ground. And the mosquito <laughs> comes out of the ground and clearly, no. Uh, if I had thought about it, I probably would have made um, nasty mosquitoes. But instead, erupting out of the ground and leaving behind a deep, deep hole, uh, you see what looks to be a massive creature. Um, its head is about five or six feet wide. Plate after plate of heavy armor seems to cover its, its, uh, its nose. Uh, bright uh, and glittering rows of eyes face you as it emerges from this hole in the ground it's long it has multiple tentacles that spin out from its its midpoint of its body it seems to be nearly 20 feet tall or 20 feet long rather as it burrows out of the floor crashing the rock to sides uh, and then uh, floats up through the hole uh, and then crashes through the ceiling, leaving nothing but holes behind. It doesn't make a sound, but you can feel this sort of psychic presence in the room as it passes through. A friend of yours? And disappears. There's a worried look that crosses across uh, Catherine's face. Something has changed. The holes, the cracks are getting larger. There's more going on here. I cannot dream to you. I... And the face kind of shifts once more, getting almost a sneering look. There is more going on here. And I will ever know. And, you know... Sorry. My urgency is going to be uh, uh, flashed, uh, fleshed by <laughs> the uh, the ongoing uh, issues of mosquito Um What do you do, if anything? Mm -hmm. 
figuring out the next step, just processing. <laughs> okay. You've sensed the room shake once again. And from beneath your feet, Medric, you can feel a steady rumbling feeling. It's over the ground itself was shaking. Actually, uh, Annie, you also noticed this as well. And as the ground starts to tilt backwards, uh, Annie has run away. Yes. <laughs> uh, Medric, make a dexterity saving throw. Uh-oh. 17. Um, as you see this once more emerge from the ground. Um, and then leave behind it another hole. Uh, oh, this stupid mosquitoes drive me nuts. Uh, sorry. Distracted. Um, sorry, I've lost my place. I'm just needing to reset my, my brain for a second here. Um, essentially, the... lost myself for a moment but as the creature kind of appears and disappears once more leaving behind a vast hole um, you both watch as Catherine tumbles backward into the hole and is lost Medric from your pers perspective on the edge of the hole managing to push back a little bit um, you can see now beyond the hole itself appears to be a, a dark void Mm -hmm. And you can actually see Catherine spinning in this void. Is there a chance we can get her back? She seems to have fallen through. She's about 60 feet away at this point, spinning and unable to move on her own. You can see her all six limbs are, are feverishly trying to move. But you don't hear her anymore, even though her mouth seems to move. Uh, do we still have that unbreakable rope? I'll ask uh, Annie and Silas. I mean, who's carrying it around during the day of a, of a carnival? Anybody keep it in their pack? I forget. <laughs> I, I just know. I mean, we're, we're all wearing all of our combat gear, so. Sure. Because we just <laughs> never know what's going to happen. <laughs> I don't know who had it, though. I assume Annie did. I, I don't know. That's I, I'm honestly asking you guys. Uh, I Annie's have... muted at the moment. Uh, I said probably, and I'll go go there, back there, and give comes over here. I'm not going further. All right, I'll go pick up the rope from Annie, and uh, I might need you guys' help with this. I don't know if I can pull her up back up on my own. So I'll wrap the rope around my arm and throw it in the hole because you know cats always love like chasing strings I guess <laughs> <laughs> I feel I'll like she would be the... very insulted by that <laughs> if so she wasn't make, like in mortal peril make an athletics check to All toss right. the roll to toss the rope athletics yeah 12 okay it's more like the dropping rope... it the rope goes, well, you kind of drop it into the hole and you, you realize as it sort of crosses some sort of invisible threshold, it no longer drops on its own. It just sort of holds there. And she tries swimming over to it, but is having some difficulty. She seems to be still propelling outward. There's another okay. shift and shake. And the room, uh, again, uh, uh, shifts. Um, this time... A small hole opens um, in the ceiling, not far from where uh, Silas is, and moves. There we go. Moves through. There we go. Um, 
Sorry, I'm really blanking today for whatever reason. Uh, as you see poking through the upper hole and then kind of pushing through to form another hole in the ceiling, what looks to be a relatively large worm that uh, kind of lands beside you. Falling through the hole, uh, you also see what looks like a, uh, a, a human. What? A human, a human woman falls and tumbles through the falls by the hole uh, and kind of avoids narrowly kind of falling into the hole that's formed on the other side. But the worm kind of comes through and lands looking... I mean, it doesn't have a face, so its facial expressions might be somewhat questionable, but looking somewhat confused about how it finds itself here now um, as it floated through. Why don't, we, uh, why don't we roll initiative just to make this a lot clearer? Just a second as I clear out the list. Just to give a certain structure to the events that are happening. Not necessarily in the combat round. Wow. Mm. Oh, that would help. There we go. Ah, hack. Ah. Okay, well, I guess I'm going to be rolling everything manually. <laughs> Oh, it worked. Worked twice. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm a little discombobulated today, and I'm not sure why. But I will try to muddle my way through. See if that worked. All right. Uh, and I will make... As well, oh, wow, okay. All right, sorry about that to keep it all in order. Um, so falling through this hole and managing to tumble before falling through again, uh, you see, uh, what looks like a, an Aelthwater villager, someone dressed in, uh, simple clothing, but, uh, wearing around their, their left arm, a number of, uh, bright ribbons, the kind of ribbons you've seen actually from some of the different games that are happening around the town right now. Uh, the sort of victory ribbons, which are a sort of consolation prize for almost winning some of the games. They seem to be extraordinarily surprised about being here all of a sudden uh, and look around uh, with some confusion, uh, looking up at the giant worm, or the, I should say, about 10 foot long worm, so not exactly giant. Well, I guess that's giant for certain worms. Anyway, uh, looking over at, uh, at uh, Silas with some confusion as well. And then there's a sort of smile that crosses their face. This is the most realistic thing I have ever been in. Has it uh, mirrors? And that's their their uh, their moment. Uh, and yes, uh, they nod quite vigorously uh, at your at your uh, at your your comment. One moment I was tending a garden, and terrible things were taking over the weeding, or taking over the 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 fruits and vegetables. And I was fighting them back, but now I find myself here. Um, Silas. Uh. It's clear this person um, thought they were somewhere else, believed they were in the House of Mirrors, um, and doesn't quite grasp what danger they might be in. This worm that's landed beside you seems to be trying to decide which of the two of you to attack. Uh, so, how big is the worm? All in all, about the size of a boa constrictor. 
but a bit thicker and much less complicated. It has a, a, a toothy maw at one end, and that's about it. Oh, and a, and a bit of a stinger at the other, I should say. Um, well, if it looks like it's about to attack, then I guess uh, we probably need to deal with it. So Silas will charge up his staff and booming blade the worm. Okay. Nineteen to hit. Uh, Twelve. Most definitely a hit. Twelve magical bludgeoning and four magical thunder. Nice. So sixteen total. As the uh, the creature, uh, how do you strike it? Just straight on. Okay. You swing and the loud crack of thunder uh, booms across the room. More bits and pieces start falling from the ceiling as it sort of, uh, it, it doesn't have a hiss, but it sort of has a, a shocked expression, if you will, on its, on its weirdly twisted jaw at the moment. Uh, and so it now seems entirely uh, uh, focused on you. Okay. Uh, and Silas looks like he's still trying to figure out what's going on. Okay. Um, let's see. All right. Uh, Annie, you can feel the ground trembling beneath your feet. Make a dexterity saving throw. as the ground erupts beneath. Oh, sorry, uh, you moved. <laughs> you moved back after I, I had uh, yeah. placed you there. Well, then never mind. Yeah. It happens over cool. in the corner. Uh, as you see this creature once more <laughs> erupt through and continue a passage, this time breaking out through the sidewall. And where, from where you're at, and you can see out the sidewall, again, it appears to be this, this endless void on the outside. There's a small amount of breeze from where you're you're uh, you're uh, uh, sitting, or where you're standing. Sorry. Um, crashing through. Whoops! Crashing through another hole that appears this time in the floor, up above. Uh, is another one. Oh. Is another one of these worms that appears. Be right just behind the, the, the crystal which has uh, molly in it. And this time, uh, crawling up out of the hole itself that's left behind, um, you see a half-orc um, who seems to be, uh, again, kind of smiling, um, uh, this time carrying uh, what looks like to be a small axe uh, and somewhat covered in, in blood. Come back here, you! Uh, the worm that's next to Silas um, hisses and tries to bite. Let's see if this works. Uh, Ten probably doesn't hit. So it lashed out at Silas and then okay. attempts to to uh, snap at your leg, but you pull back the leg just just easily enough. Uh, but its intention is full on t full on you at the moment. Uh, the other one uh, seems to be running away uh, and slithers over towards, um, oh, come on, slithers over towards uh, Medric and makes an, an attempt to snap at you. As it does so and as it moves through, uh, you see it nudge the crystal that contains uh, the woman to the left, the blue crystal. And the crystal mm -hmm. kind of teeters and totters a little bit. You can see with alarm that she, uh, inside, seems to be uh, concerned about that and trying to react. It does, however, launch itself at you, and its multi, uh, multi-toothed mouth, uh, with these nasty fangs on the outside, grip onto your body, uh, and bite down, um, for seven piercing. Uh, sorry, fifteen piercing damage. And it Does holds it have to on. Attack roll? It did. 
What, what was it? 25. Oh, okay. I never even saw it. It's probably just lagging. Oh, I think... Okay, so... It, it, it might have done it privately, and I don't know why. Okay, yeah, 25. So how much damage? Uh, 15. Ow! Piercing damage. Uh, as these these uh, these prongs uh, kind of bite in and grip onto your chest, and you realize that while it's not that wide around, it's only about a foot and a half wide around. Its mouth actually opens up larger, and it's stuck there, almost like it was trying to swallow you, but it's not big enough to swallow you, and now it just seems to be gripped onto you. Ow, uh, fucking and armor! You, and then you f actually you don't feel the rest because that doesn't happen, um, but you actually hear the small sizzle of its bile kind of rising in its stomach. Wonderful. Let's see, that's that. Medric, it is your turn. This thing is gripped onto your stomach. The the rope dangles out behind you. But and Catherine hasn't grabbed it yet? No. It seems like she's not able to move too much within the space that she's in. All right. So with the one hand, I'll keep dangling the rope in the hole, and the other hand, I'll try to rip the worm off of me. Okay. That's a strength check. Oh, yeah. I'm strong. Well, 12. Strong-ish. Wait, wait. Did I? No, I don't have. Okay. Yeah, 12. Yeah, it rolled a 16. I'm, I'm not sure yeah. why all of my rolls are turning up private at the moment. Um, I think so apologies you're not going to see the rolls from me but I'll just tell you what they are you roll the 16 uh, as it seems to have is hooked its its teeth around almost like fingernails hooked them around your armor and is actually kind of holding on for dear life and you can kind of feel as you as you grab onto this thing and try to yank it off to one side you can feel its whole body starting to convulse slightly and as a cat owner, this is a convulsion you're unfortunately familiar with, I suspect, um, which would be kind of the uh -oh. same sort of physical motion that a hairball would, but for a, a strange <laughs> worm, it's a little bit different. Um, you could move. You're not constrained, but it's sort of attached to you. Yeah, and I want to make sure Catherine can actually grab a hold of the rope. Okay. Um, do I have any... Can I do like a bonus action or anything? Or... Do you have a bonus action? Like, I mean, just to ask uh, Flamekeeper, what do you think would happen if I broke this, this crystal? The one that she's in, basically. Hmm, okay. Um, she kind of um, looks at you, and you can see her kind of contemplating, and her lips are moving, which may also be a prayer to Ignis um, at the moment. I don't know. But it's an option, and she pounds on the on the crystal from the inside. Nothing seems to happen for her, though. Okay. Because I might take a swing at it next round. Okay. Annie? You're muted? I keep forgetting that I'm mute from my headset <laughs> so I don't accidentally hang up again. <laughs> Um, I am going to throw one of my darts. Uh, yeah, one of my darts. Uh, at the one by Silas. Or actually, no, at the one by, by Medric. Okay. That's on Medric there. Oh, that did not stay in the, the thingy. The six. 16 plus 7, so 20, 20 some odd. That's definitely uh, it. <laughs> uh, brain cannot math, apparently. Uh, that is uh, 6 damage, and then, sorry, I forget what the, the thorns do. Give me 2 seconds. Uh, on. I have three things called salt thorns, do initial. Uh, I'll do an extra uh, hell of thorns. 
or okay. no, that 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 might impact my drink. I'll, I'll I'll do the extra D4 poison damage. Okay, and this so is the. Um, let's see here. Uh, I'm trying to find that it, what oh, as a month as thorns, right? Okay. Yeah. I was, like, I was trying to remember. So yeah, you're using one of the darts you created out of one of her thorns, giving it a toss. Uh, and and yeah, so I'm adding a D4 poison damage, which was a three. Okay. And that also removes uh, reduces her damage or uh, reduces its movement. Yeah. Okay. As the the thorn kind of digs into the side, and you can see the right in front of you, uh, Medric, you can see this thorn kind of embed itself in her in the side of the worm that's holding onto you. And it kind of almost seems like it spreads out a little bit. A little bit of, of uh, bluish green goo starts pouring out of that side. It smells oh. awful. You, you know what I can also do? Uh, sneak attack damage on that. Hey. It smells oh. bad, but it doesn't smell as bad as that time I fell into the sewage a few weeks ago. Ooh, that's that's uh, 6, 12... Uh, 16. <laughs> nice. Uh, hey. it's, it, it doesn't smell as bad. It smells differently bad. <laughs> um, it smells more, more, uh, uh, more sharp. It's like the, the, the nostrils, you, the, the hairs in your nostrils are kind of cringing, rolling back into your, into your nose as this sort of burns with the smell. Um, but you also notice that when it embeds, uh, it kind of does so at an angle and kind of skids a little bit, opening up a very nasty wound on its side. Uh, it thrashes uh, wildly while holding on to you, quite unhappy with its new position. Um, are you going to move, Annie? Okay. Uh, let's see, this one. Let's see. This seems a little too real, says the guy over here. I don't know if I like this anymore. And he kind of stands up. That's because this is. That makes two of us. And you see his face well, kind of blanch. Five of us. Wait, this, 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 this is, this is. And he yells out, exit. I want an exit. <laughs> There's no response in the room, briefly. Silas. Well, he's going to uh, hex the worm next to him and beat it again. <laughs> okay. What does the what does the hex look like as you as you cast it? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Nope. Uh, he just uh, gestures and says something in a language they don't understand, uh, and that's it. Because it's a completely uh, not seen spell. Okay. Uh, 25 to hit. Definitely hits. Uh, six bludgeon magical bludgeoning, six thunder, one necrotic, so 13. Um, as you, uh, as you uh, kind of lay your hex upon it, you can see it's kind of, kind of quiver. Its skin tightens up as if it feels constrained somehow. Uh, in that moment of its confusion, you whack down upon it. Once again, the, the sound of thunder crackles across the room. Uh, but it seems much diminished uh, and pretty much looks like it's afraid of you at this point. Uh, are you okay. moving or, or anything else? It's going to move there. Um, you hear a, a, another rumble as the creature passes through once more, this time not far away from where you are, but not close enough to do too much damage as it erupts from the floor, once again opening up a void into space. The fellow on the other side, however, um, seems somewhat disturbed and... Wow. Manages to uh, to scramble back up using the, the crude axe he was holding as a sort of uh, climbing climbing rake. I can, can see your rolls again, roll? by the way. That one was a manual roll. Those ones seem to work okay. okay. Anything I'm doing from D&D from, uh, &D Beyond don't seem to be showing up for anybody. Um, sorry, what did you say, uh, uh, Silas? Same thing. Okay. 
Uh, let's see. Medric, this thing is still attached to your stomach and smells terrible. It seems to be uh, shaking and shivering, though, as if now trying to figure out if it can release itself. All right. Well, I will... I lost my papers again. God damn it. I will burning hands the worm and try to face it in the direct in the direction where uh flamekeeper sidewalls crystal is okay Since so i can hopefully you, like you scorch kind of, the worm and break the crystal you can kind of twist your whole body as it's attached to your torso and uh and try to do the the uh the full-on full court flaming <laughs> thing Three, um, six plus. what is is that a to hit roll or is that a, is that a save I think it's the save. I'm just checking to see if my if I apply my modifiers to it. I thought I wrote this down, and I probably did. I just can't find the spot where I wrote it down. Elevator music. No, it's only three six. Yeah, burning hands is yeah. a dex save. Okay, I will have it do it at disadvantage because it can't really move that far away from you. Um, 12 unless it saves <laughs> so it's two saves are two that's not the lowest one and <laughs> zero uh, it takes 12 uh, and for some reason my mouse decides that double clicking is the new single clicking uh, as it uh, burns away at layers of it, now it is desperately thrashing to hold on. Still not dead. Um, I will have you make an attack roll, essentially a dexterity-based attack roll. Um, so dexterity plus your proficiency, uh, plus your, sorry, your, um, uh, uh, not dexterity. Uh, hmm. Actually, it's a spell casting attack roll to hit the crystal mm -hmm. with full force. Um Spell attack roll. Okay, so spell attack modifier. That's plus five. Yeah. Fuck. That's a seven. <laughs> Unfortunately, the, the, the fire kind of careens off one side. You do see the crystal kind of seem to, to crack under the heat. Um, and uh, within the, the flame keeper kind of looks at it curiously. I think it's working. Or at least it did something that seems appropriate. If anything, it'll help her get out. Exactly. Um, Annie. Um, I am going to uh, throw a another thorn at uh, this duder here. Um, that is. Oh, that's a natural twenty. Hey. <laughs> nice. Um. So I uh, will. And sorry, ramp. that was the one you were attacking uh, before, or the, uh, no, or the one that's attacking that Silas? Okay, I want to make sure. I thought I heard it right. Yep. Uh, so. Well, that's uh, what that, definitely hits. Yes. <laughs> uh, so that is going to be. Uh, do I need to separate the poison damage? No. No, you can merge it all in. Okay, so that is. Uh, uh, this is going to be a satisfying roll. Like actual dice for crit and so on. <laughs> uh, especially not one with uh, four dice of sneak attack. Mm -hmm. Hey, yo, that warm is going down. <laughs> uh, the, 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 this is how much dice I am rolling. <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. Full of dice. It's been a while. <laughs> okay, this will take me a second. That is. Six plus six for twelve. That's plus five for ten, so twenty-two. Twenty-four, twenty-five. Uh thirty-one. Uh, uh thirty-five. Forty-one. Forty-seven. Forty-seven. 
um, with a say, single <laughs> let us just say that it is well beyond resurrection at this particular point uh, do you have a graphic depiction of how this little thorn tears this uh, this worm uh, from existence um it, 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 it basically like explodes in goo <laughs> okay uh, it's what my brain as... thinks Let's, let's say perhaps <laughs> as, as we get a slow-mo version of you whipping this thorn, it kind of spins in midair and kind of catches the upper lip of the open maw of this thing and just starts to pull and shred down the very side, opening it from the side. Uh, bluish green goo seems to pour out from this uh, this this writhing, dying, massacred, snake-like thing, uh, spewing it into the area. Um, the creature is not only dead, but actually that area is is uh, either uh, deadly to a dangerous terrain, uh, difficult terrain, I should say, because of the acid pools which have now formed on it, or uh, uh, yeah, or you can you can move through it at normal speed, but you'll have to make a save. Um, and I'm not sure why it's not keeping my X across it. There we go. There we go. Maybe that'll work. Uh, yeah, yeah, the thorn I thought proves... she was hitting the one next to Medrick. Nope. Okay. I, I wanted to get the one near the person beside the person that was freaking yeah. out. Okay, okay. No problem. But, uh, that was my logic behind that. Um. Also, uh, I will use my bonus action to give Medrick advantage on his next attack on that. I'm like, you got this. Just careful of the acid. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, that one, uh, the fellow right by there uh, manages to avoid getting too much acid. A little bit uh, dribbles onto a boot and he can see it starting to eat through the boot. Those are my best boots as he scrabbles backward. However, once more, the, the uh, world seems to shake. And from not far away from him, in fact, uh, the uh, creature emerges, this time kind of plowing through uh, both walls at the same time and then uh, creating this, this massive chasm where this hallway once was. And so he backs up ever so slightly and then, sorry, mosquito, uh, and, then, uh, <laughs> uh, and then just scrabbles to the edge of it and stops there. Uh, kind of looking like he's caught between a, well, an acid Wait, pool and a, and a hole. Wasn't that one a woman? Or... Uh... And the half-orc was a guy? Oh, sorry, yes. <laughs> the image is very small on my screen, and I couldn't tell. Okay. Um, I wonder if I can do... Is it that? No, that's not the button. Okay, never mind. Uh... Right, so that explosion happened. Uh, let's see. Now it is um, a smaller hole erupts on the other side. Um, and another one of these worms emerges from the hole. Uh, let's see. The, the worm attached to Medric is going to try to flee. Not being happy about its situation suddenly. Uh, it's going to try to detach itself. Uh, it has not got a lot of chance to do so, but it's still going to try. Uh, I'm not stopping it. It it didn't defeat its own difficulty. <laughs> you got it done. <laughs> uh, so unfortunately, it cannot unhook itself, uh, but it will try to to hork up at you a, a, a bit of acid. Uh, make a... Dexterity saving throw at disadvantage because it's attached to you. There's a 12 and a 2, so I'm pretty sure that's a hit. <laughs> as the... the uh, as the... Oh, wow. As the, the... The sort of... A bit of it sploshes out of its side where that... That, uh, that hole had been opened up before, but enough of it gets over you and kind of starts to, to, to sizzle against your armor and then kind of seep out and around and get underneath the armor, which is really uncomfortable, which is why the six acid damage uh, is 
way it is. I'm sorry. I'm going to be clapping a lot. Uh, but yes, six acid damage as it sort of rolls over you. Uh, let's see. And Medrick is just thinking to himself, like, well, I'm glad I started the proceedings to get that plate armor commissioned because this one's going to be <laughs> destroyed. <laughs> it's, it's, it's etched to the sides where the, the claw-like uh, uh, teeth, external teeth have gripped onto it. And now there's this sort of melting pattern uh, on the surface of the armor. It is your turn, however. Looking up stuff. I think I got skipped. Oh, did you? Uh, also, oh, I just sorry. realized, uh, j just to make it more dramatic, um, I forgot to add my actual modifiers to that, so it was actually <laughs> 51 damage. J just just to, to uh, appreciate a dart. <laughs> That's very true. Okay, uh, Silas, yes, you're up, so it gives a chance for Medric to look stuff up. Yeah. Um, well... Then he's going to go over here, and uh, bonus action switches the hex to the other worm, okay. uh, and then beats on it. Nine to hit. Uh, a nine, unfortunately, is not quite enough. Uh, it's flailing, and Medric keeps moving. And every single step, every slight adjustment that Medrix makes uh, causes it to have a, a bigger swing of movement. So unfortunately, you miss. Sure. Uh, All right. I looked up a thing, but it's not something I'm going to use. So yeah. I'll do the same thing I did last time. Burning hands on the worm and try to direct the flame towards the crystal that uh, Flame Keeper Tidewell is in. Okay. Ah. Ten damage. If, it's, if it saves or if it doesn't save. All oh, right. Uh, that was a dex save, right? Yeah. So five if, if it saves. And... Oh, it did it. <laughs> okay. Uh, DC is 13, which is I rolled. Surprising. I rolled a pair of threes. <laughs> hey! <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's it's quite caught in the, in the thing itself. Uh, how much damage does that do? 10. Oh, yeah. Ten fire. Uh, as you successfully sort of burn away uh, from, uh, I would imagine, kind of trying to angle it properly. So you're kind of angling it both at the crystal, but also the thing. And the, the, the uh, scorching ray uh, cuts up the back of the thing. Uh, once more, further, uh, further exploding it as it, as it limply, limply, uh, uh, it limply no longer moves, but, but hilariously still attached to your, uh, your armor. It's burning hands, so not scorching ray. So it's like a fifteen foot cone. Oh, okay, okay. Which may, oh, should right. make it easier to hit the crystal. Yes, sorry. Um, as you engulf it in your fire, and I'll say you can easily hit the crystal. It's not. It's not that. It's, I was thinking it was a ray. Uh, and the crystal itself seems to to uh, crack and snap and um, fall apart. And as it does, the image of the flame keeper drifts away into the small pieces and is no more. You live on in the ever in the ever flame, flame keeper tied well. It was an attempt. <laughs> an attempt At least I, I sent her back to Ignis. I mean it was fire. Yeah. <laughs> in pieces. <laughs> uh now we're back around to Annie. You're muted. Um, I, why can I not? There we go. I'm going to go around to here and see what, uh, Medrick is doing there. Um, did anything happen around us when he broke that? Um, not particularly. 
but there's been a sort of constant shudder as um as those that thing has been moving through and burrowing through this area fair enough um i am going to uh what do i have uh i'm going to grab vice and start trying to stab at um this one okay the guard inside has been sort of watching with confusion and some horror of what's happening on the other side. Then sort of notice you, notices you slinking around the crystal and then pulling out Vice, which you notice that he recognizes. He is wearing the tabard of a guard. And there's a confusion that crosses his face as you go and stab at the, at the crystal. Uh, I don't recognize the face, right? Um, make a charisma is it, check. Is it Riemann? It is not Riemann. Okay. Uh, just a straight charisma check. Uh, sure. That is uh, 14. 14? Uh, as you stab at the crystal, um, you kind of catch an expression on his face, and you actually do recognize him. But the last time you saw him, he was among the dead, counted on the day of the assault on Eiltsvater by the Sea Devils. Right. One of many guards who died that day. You strike at the crystal? Yep. Roll to see if you get a critical. You can't really miss. Although if you roll a one, it glances off. Uh, that is not a critical. Okay. Sneak attack damage doesn't really apply to harming things, <laughs> so it's straight up damage. Yep, uh, but it still is magical damage. Uh, mm -hmm. That is more than a regular thing. Mm -hmm. And yep. I'm not, you know, breaking a dagger. No, I, I, I'm just suggesting that the sneak attack damage doesn't apply to this is all. Oh, yeah. You can't it really sneak any... up on an inanimate object. I mean, you can. <laughs> <laughs> been dealing with crutches for a few days you you definitely can <laughs> uh that is uh seven seven okay you crashed uh, upon it and you kind of wedge the 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 point of the dagger in and find a nice little place to to lever and a big chunk of the crystal falls off um you can see the the guard on the inside kind of uncertain as to what to do he he seems concerned, and he, you can see him sort of pounding at you, but he doesn't seem to be able to to push through the inside of the crystal. Um, I also looking... say I'm yep. I'm sorry for you being involved in this. Uh, he kind of nods grimly. It's all right, Miss. It's the sort of thing I signed up for. Well, not exactly, but my duty is to serve. Give my best to the captain if you see him. Uh, if he's still alive, he's still. that is. And you see a look of relief pass across his face. Um, you remember that he died not only in that battle, but early. So he didn't know what the outcome was. Yep. Uh, and I do ask his name. Okay. Um, Luro. All right. Uh, that is your turn. Uh, the, gallo the fellow who was by the worm and then backed up and a massive hole opened up behind him uh, decides to try to take a different tack and try to move carefully uh, cl uh, through this area and does actually manage to just barely make it to the other side. Um, kind of leerily watching the, the holes that are opening up and more. Silas. You're muted. Still thinking. Um, so you s was Molly's crystal cracked? I know something made it teeter, but I don't remember if they made it crack or not. It uh, it shook slightly, but it has not cracked. Uh, it's at okay. a slightly odd angle at the moment. And she looks over at you somewhat pleadingly. You don't hear anything from her, though. Hmm. 
Well, he's going to uh, use his action to attempt to telepathically reach her. Okay. And say, how can I help? What do you want? Um, her eyes go wide as she receives this communication. And there's a strange moment for you. Because it is a connection. Whether you thought this was an illusion or not, or whether this was all real, in that moment, you do connect with something. You don't read minds to this particular mechanism, so you don't get any further insight. But you can see her mouthing words and hear the words in your, in your mind. Silas, I, I didn't know if I would see you again. I don't know what this is or, or where I am. There's so much I don't remember. But I don't think I can come back to you yet. And she looks over at the, the broken middle crystal where no evidence of Tidewell actually re remains. Uh, Silas will tell the others that he's not sure that breaking the crystal is the right thing to do. Uh, other than that, he doesn't have it. I mean, he's got no actions left, so. Okay. What else is there to do? Wait until this entire floor is holes? I don't know what we're supposed to do. Are we supposed to save them? Are we supposed to stop them? Uh, do we kill the creature that's making it? Uh, we definitely need to do something, but you might not be releasing the spirits by by destroying the crystal. You might be destroying them. So that's all Silas has time for anyway. Okay. Um, he was actually supposed to go on the other uh, visitors go, but I'm going to have this guy. Um, seeing what the others are doing, uh, the half-orc uh, wielding his somewhat rough-looking uh, axe, uh, goes, aha, I see, and, and attacks the crystal uh, with Molly in it, or attempts to. Nothing Silas can do about it. Um, he does hit it. And the, the axe kind of, despite its poor condition, does seem to embed and take a chunk out of the, the crystal from behind. Um, you get a sort of weird backlash of the uh, un, um, unfiltered fear in the moment where Molly feels that and the entire thing seems to shift um, as the, the crystal starts to break. The room shudders again and another hole is revealed. Uh, and then smaller holes start to appear as the entire room seems to be uh, uh, collapsing and crumbling. Uh, and you find yourself between two of them. Please make a dexterity saving throw. Twice. Oh, that's a natural 19 plus, uh, I think, 7. So that's a uh, 25 okay. and a uh, 17 plus six. So 20 brain, 23. Despite the room shave, shaking and shivering, and despite the, the, uh, the suddenness of these two holes, you find yourself standing between two holes, each one, uh, seeming to go into nowhere, seeming to, to uh, disappear into the void. Um, and I'm just opening up a few more of the holes here to show. I can't see them on that map, so there we go. As more and more of these holes seem to be falling away, um, another one opens as a worm comes crawling out of a side and seems to be... Uh, well, one could say uh, carrying, or one could say carried by, uh, or, or ridden by, uh, a woman in a uh, rough set of leathers. Um, looks like she's, she's dressed for uh, 
outdoor times and is in fact kind of riding the worm through the hole up in the uh, far upper part. Uh, but the other worms are going to, well, the one remaining worm, I should say, doo -doo -doo, is going to slink down towards uh, Annie and attempt to take a bite out of you. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, does a 15 hit? Meets. Meets. So it kind of does that same sort of launch that the other one did, where it launches towards your chest, and you step back just enough where it just sort of lands in front of you uh, and kind of curls up to, to uh, stand beside you. Uh, let's see. Medric. Or did I skip? No, I don't think you skipped anybody. Oh, no, that's right, because Silas went before this other guy. So, yeah, we're good. I'll grab a piece of the green crystal right. and then move all the way up to... I'll move up here. Like, maybe there's some additional clues around where the altar is. Okay. Or, um, are you the altar go was? The rope, or are you just retrieving the rope? What are you doing with the rope? Oh, shit. Uh, right. Is Catherine like, making any headway towards the rope? Uh, as you look in, it looks as though she's still kind of drifting further away from it. All right, I'll retrieve it as my action, and then I'll move to where I am now. Okay. Um, and I'll ask the, the other lady, it's like, you can ride the worms? And you can see she's got one dagger kind of in its back as the as the way to hold on. Seemed like the right idea at the time. Uh, make an arcana check as you sort of contemplate this. Space. Oh boy. <laughs> That's a six. You have no idea what's going on. This doesn't make any <laughs> sense at all. This place doesn't right? seem to, 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 to fit any known uh, laws of, 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 of work. Um. However, not far away from you, you do see what looks as though the, the, the stone wall that surrounds this place seems to shimmer and shake. And revealed there, there seems to be a, a cave opening that appears above it in sort of semi-translucent uh, yellow letters is the word exit. And that appears suddenly up here. I'll yell that to my companions. It says exit. Um, you are briefly reminded, though, that calling for the exit does void any chance to pro for a prize. It's oh. weird that that comes back to you in the moment, but it seems to. Well, nobody's gone through it yet, so. And you also remember that uh, this guy had called out for the exit. Okay. But it came late. Uh, Annie. Hello. Um, well, I have a worm in front of me, so I will use my... Uh, which I believe... Use your something cut out there. Uh, steady aim to give okay. myself advantage mm -hmm. uh, on a stab with vice at the worm beside me. Uh, that is uh, 13 plus uh, 7, so dirty 20. Oh, that's a hit. Yes. Uh, sorry, I keep forgetting that like Vice has a bunch of stuff about it because I've not used it in a while. Okay. It has not lost any hit points, I'm guessing? It is not. Uh, so that is eight damage for the uh, stabby stab, and this uh, six, twelve, and fourteen. I keep rolling sixes; it's great. And I'm just going to roll one to watch it. Uh, so yeah, six. Yeah. So eighteen in total. It sounded like. Sorry, six and then 
sorry, a six, and then two threes, and then a two. So that is a 14. 14. And are you including your your uh, dex bonus? Oh, that was in the original eight for the stabby stab. Okay. Sorry, my, my brain, it's <laughs> easier for my brain. <laughs> so. Uh, so total of 22 then? Yes. Okay. That sounds about right. <laughs> All right. Uh, as you stab forward with Vice and it kind of leans into it a little bit, uh, you find yourself kind of stabbing inward into its open mouth and up through, well, in a normal creature, it would be up through its brain, but there doesn't seem to be any brain, doesn't seem to be any eyes. You have no idea how this thing senses anything. But you pull back and there's now a, a separated flap of skin where the, 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 the top of that, or the <laughs> top relative uh, part of that mouth is. It's deep, deeply wounded. Cool. Are you going to... Uh... Um, I am going to stay where I am because I might as well. Okay. Um... Oh, I can't... And also, I can't move because I believe steady am. I need to not move. Oh, yeah. right. Okay. Uh, let's see. This guy is going to try to pick his way carefully, carefully, carefully. No, why is he going to do that? Because, uh, let's see. He doesn't have any clue of where to go, but she seems scary, so we'll go to her as he kind of moves over, trying to get closer to Annie. Uh, the other one is going to take another swing at the crystal in front of him, because that's all he thinks to do. Uh, ooh, crit. Oh. Uh, it's my turn first. Uh, no, all the NPCs go at the same time. I just had him go after you before, because I'd forgotten him. Um, and so he hits, and you can see now a large crack, and... In this crystal, there's sort of multiple smaller clusters, and some of the smaller clusters move, move away. Um, for a moment, the connection with Molly wavers, uh, and you can kind of feel her existence disappearing. Uh, but it is your turn, Silas. The uh, orc, the half-orc who struck, uh, yells out with triumph. Aha! Good hit. Well, Silas switches the hex to him and beats him Screaming at him to stop. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's easily it. He takes eight magical bludgeoning, seven magical thunder, and five magical necromantic damage. So 20 points total. He is out like a light, flattened in this massive uh, uh, crack of thunder. And goes falling backwards to the ground. Silas goes and stands over his body and defends the crystal. Okay. Silas, she is dead. Silas, what are you doing? We don't know. I'm not going to have her spirit destroyed just because you people want to smash crystals. We have no idea what that's doing. What, so you're going to stay here with her forever? Anyway, we're going to be here for five out. seconds till we get to think. Have that time. We don't have noticed. This whole room is going to collapse. Okay, the room does shudder and shake once more. This time, another hole emerging from the very top, and I think. One emerges just beside where you happen to be, Medric. So I will need a dexterity saving throw from Medric. Oh, that's a three. You begin to slide inside the hole. You are kind of on the edge of it. You've grasped onto the very, very edge, but you are sliding in. And you can feel now this sort of weird pressure pulling you from below. Oh, shit. Shield bracing on one side, hammer bracing on the other side. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, 
and emerging from, uh, let's see, from this hole is another worm that slides out. And from this hole, whoops, is another worm that slides out. The worm that's facing off against Annie, um, looking pained <laughs> and concerned, but cornered in a way, uh, lashes out at you. Uh, 13 to hit? Nope, didn't think so. Uh, as it sort of, it, it kind of half-heartedly does so, but it's sort of wincing from that one side which was ripped open by your, your previous strike. Uh, this one, <laughs> uh, well, let's see. Let's see how good her animal handling is. Uh, she does have advantage because she currently has, I don't know if she needs advantage. Damn. Uh, as she manages to get it to move, you think, in the direction you want or in the direction she wants. It sort of zigzags a little bit, and Medrick, you can kind of see uh, this this worm, and she's on the back of it, uh, ho uh, hollering out kind of, uh, well, for lack of a better term, yeehaw! She seems to be enjoying herself in this weird <laughs> of circumstances. Uh, Medrick, you find yourself dangling on the edge of a precipice to avoid. Yeah, I will uh, try to pull myself out of there. <laughs> Uh, acrobatics or athletics? That's going to be athletics because it's plus five instead of plus zero. 17. Woo. 17. You crawl back up the edges of the hole. The hole itself seems to be crumbling in and there's barely any surface. Um, as you kind of uh, feel this shift in, in surface, um, there's this weird sort of feeling of, of the bottom half of you was somewhere else entirely. It felt colder. It felt emptier. It felt... Um, no longer like it was pulling you down, only the upper part of you seemed to be pulling you down. Once inside the hole, uh, it felt almost as though nothing was pulling at you anywhere. It felt empty. It felt lifeless. But you scramble up feel, out, of, out of the hole. Did it feel anything like uh, when I went through all the other exits, which were equal, like, voids? No. No, those had definite presence, direction, sense of solidity. This has a presence almost of nothing. Shit. Good to know. I was getting out of there my action? Or... That is an action, yes. Okay, so I'll use the rest of my movement to go over here. Is there anything on the altar that will give me a clue as to like, what the hell we're supposed to do? Uh, make an investigation check. As you poke away at the, the surface of the altar, um, something very strange happens. It seems to sort of crumble under your fingers, almost as though the, the heavy granite substance is no longer holding its substance. That's kind of the use of the word substance twice, but I'm standing by it. Okay. Um, Annie. You're muted. I would like to ask her. She had jumped into one of the, a, a hole similar to this from where she came. Okay, so you yell out to her, you know, did you f come through a hole? Um, did you go into a hole? Ah. Is more, I, I want to know if she was in another room and jumped into a hole similar to this. Okay. I guess it was the same. There wasn't the darkness on the other side, though. It just looked like another cave. It's better than the spiders, though. Uh, hmm. Yeah, uh, I am going to... I'm going to continue stabbing at the crystal. There's literally nothing else in this room but holes that are to a void. Uh, there is still one of these creatures in front of you. Just wanted to point that out. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll stab at the creature for, for now. Okay. 
uh, steady aim as well. Uh, I'm going to guess that an 18 hits. Oh, yes. And it is missing his hit points now, so it gets a d4 radiant as well. Uh, that is 5, 10, 13. Do I need to separate radiant? No. Okay. Uh, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. <laughs> so it had 20 hit points. <laughs> uh, describe to me the evisceration of this particular creature. Uh, I, I stabbed down uh, where its brains would be. Uh, and uh, it, it no longer has brains because it didn't have brains. Okay. It no longer has brains all along its body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as you as you bring it, your your weight down on the dagger and it kind of goes through this weird, tough, leathery skin, pierces through to the other side of it, and it, it instinctively rears back, allowing you to cut essentially this one in two once more. And again, where it lands, the, the sort of seepage of the yellow-green acid turns that space uh, into difficult terrain. Uh, or again, moving through it at full speed means you have to contend with the the uh, the uh, the acid that's there. All right, um, you have movement. Okay, uh, these guys. Um, he's going to try to seeing what you've done. Kind of wants to avoid that part. He's moving here and then trying to figure out if he can go through. So kind of picking his way carefully, uh, seeing the, the terrible acidic thing that he barely made it through last time, decides to move away. Uh, he is unconscious. So Silas, it is your turn. Silas yells out. Oh, worm riding lady. She went on the worm's turn because it's really the worm that's moving and she's just trying to direct it. I see. It, it's all of her action. Uh, Silas says, Tau Zek Riva, are we supposed to destroy these crystals to, to win this? And with the name being uttered, appearing not far away from you, actually kind of right in front of you, is indeed the Beholder. Ah, I was wondering if you were going to question things destruction of the crystals is a symbolic destruction of your past. Are you willing to let it go? The exit is just over there. Well, the key word to Silas was symbolic. Uh, so he will turn around and smack... Uh, he can't hex the crystal, I would assume, because it's not a creature. Uh, so he smashes at the crystal. So, uh, just looking at uh, Molly and saying, I miss you. And there's a solemn nod on her head as she acknowledges. Uh, it's a 20 to hit and does really shitty damage. Uh, seven total. Um, you find the boom of the thunder seems to provide more resonance in the crystal than anything else. Uh, but it does seem to hold fast, although massive spider webs of crystals uh, cross up. And you can see that despite the fact that she knew it was coming, uh, Molly still reacts with some fear as the thing shakes. Well, that's all Silas has got. Okay. I'm just um, rolling because I forgot to take damage from casting spells earlier. <laughs> okay. Um. Oh, actually, he will bonus action to move the hex onto the uh, critter at the bottom. Okay. Why don't we see if I can mark that guy with something. How about purple? Purple hex. Um, as emerging from another hole nearby you is another one of the worms. Emerging from the one where the lady who rode the worm coming from. Uh, another one emerges from there. And another one emerges uh, not far from 
where Medrick is, the hole that he just uh, crawled his way out of. Um, and the room starts to shake as uh, you can feel the ground becoming less solid and less certain. Medrick, what would you like to do? Oh, actually, <laughs> sorry. The, the woman is going to try to ride this worm again. Uh, let's see, I believe it was that one. Manages to hold on as it starts charging uh, down in this direction. Charging towards the guy who just came out. And she's just riding along with it. Sorry, Medrick. I was going to... If I were to take my all my movement one, two, three, four, and go over here, can I pass through this worm's box, like square? Uh, it would attack you. Yeah, I'm willing to chance that. Okay. And then you certainly can. I'll run next to the injured or dead half orc here. A twenty to hit. He's only injured. Fuck six. Uh, for eleven. If I remember, if I wasn't standing on him, I would have actually healed him, but. Oh well. Uh, as it as it sort of launches itself towards you as you pass by, um, I. Uh, it was a successful hit, so it grapples onto you. Okay. So in fact, it moves with you. Because it's lighter than Fucking you are. Fucking worms. I think. Uh, where did you go? I'm right here. I'm under the beholder, probably. Oh, oh okay. Sorry. Well, I'll move him out of the way just for convenience' sake. As he kind of skitters about the room. All right. So how much damage was that? 11. As I got a good solid hit on you as you passed by. And I'll cast a uh, Cure Wounds on him. Okay. Okay. So he gets six HP back. Um, you are a little surprised that he didn't immediately come back to uh, come back awake when he fell. Mm -hmm. Because the GM forgot that particular feature. So. All right. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but he does sort of uh, groan and wake from the from the ground, looking up at Silas, who's still standing over him. Uh, that was your action, and you move. Yeah. And bonus action, spiritual weapon. Yeah. Let me uh, see if I've got that. Where is it going to appear? Uh, right here. Okay. And you should have control over it. And it's going to attack that shitty worm that's holding on to me. Okay. I kind of imagine that uh, that that this slash, is slash. Launched, launched onto you and is kind of attached onto your back, so you're kind of turning your back to let the spiritual weapon get a better hit at it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 14 hits. And plus modifier. It takes nine fire or nine light. It takes nine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as you kind of feel the impact, as the as the flaming club comes bearing down on this on this worm att appendage, you've you've uh, you've gathered again. All right, that was all of you, I believe, Annie. Uh, I am going to uh, once again take a swing at the crystal in front of me. Okay. Um, I, I will steady aim to give myself advantage just to speed things up in case. Uh, dirty 20 again. Oh yeah, that's a hit. Yep. Uh, does, does it count as the if it's missing damage? Uh, no. No, that's okay. literally for that's for creatures. Cool. Uh, that is a three plus four, so eight. Or sorry, seven. Okay. 
a large chunk comes out of the crystal, weirdly kind of revealing the interior. And for the first time, you see the guard's guard on the inside, and you can clearly see his leg. It looks just, solid on the inside. You just cut out there. Oh, sorry. Um, as a large chunk of the crystal comes comes flying away, um, it reveals kind of the interior, and you can clearly see the guard's leg, solid as anything right in front of you. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. That is, that is my turn. Okay. Was that one of the guards that, did he like lose his leg or something, or and now it's back? Or what? Like in nope. the fight originally? Okay. Nope. Uh, just that it seems solid and no longer an image on the inside of, of glass. It looks real. It looks real. I'll be right back. I'm just going to go get my phone, JJ. Okay. Uh, this guy picks his way, <laughs> running rapidly. <laughs> Screw all you guys. I see an exit. Uh, but your loot. He's literally not worrying about anything. Wait, uh, does that mean they share our loot? Um, the half orc from the ground uh, looks up at Silas standing over him and tries to find a place to stand. Um, there's very little space right there. So he's going to try to try to move around by the front of the crystal, crawling away from you, not even getting bothering to get up. Not punch. <laughs> I let's get out of the way. Um, unfortunately, starts to slide into the hole and is now caught teetering on the edge of it. Uh, that's all of them. Silas, you're up. Okay. Hmm. Silas is momentarily <laughs> inflicted over what to do. Uh, it's either smash the crystal or help the guy who tried to smash it in the first place. Uh, he will try to help the guy out. Okay. Nobody wants to fall down a hole. So let's call this uh, an acrobatics or an athletics check. Is it going to be stronger or is it going to be more careful? It's going to be the one I've actually got something in. Okay. So he tries to find a good angle and... And heave him. Uh, I will say you managed to pull him up onto the surface of the ground. Just in front of you. He's looking rather confused, as he was pretty sure you attacked him a second ago. But everything has come a little bit fast for him. That's your action? You can move or bonus? Mm -hmm. No, got nothing. Okay. I don't think I've got any bonuses that attack. So, let's see. This worm will move forward. And this worm will move forward. This one will move to this guy because he wasn't paying attention to where he was going. Uh, and let's see if she can still direct this thing where she wants to. Yeah, more or less. Uh, she doesn't really have a particular direction. Actually, no, she does lose control of it. And it dives towards a hole. And I'll see if she can actually... She stumbles off the side of the hole. The The creature goes missing, and she is now dangling on the edge of this hole. Uh, one of them, one of the worms attacks the fellow that you just saved. Does have disadvantage because it's on the ground. Uh, so misses. Dives its I head. don't think melee attacks get disadvantage for the target being on the ground. Oh, sorry, it would be advantage. Yeah. I got turned around there, so that means it does hit. And it pins him to the ground. He goes unconscious uh, once more. 
Uh, one of them attacks Tau Zek Rifa. Tau Zek Riva, I should say. <laughs> uh, snaps at him. He kind of laughs a little bit. Wonderful. Uh, let's see. Nope, oh, that's right. I got it right. Uh, and one attacks our power four hapless guy trying to get away. And hits him too. Um, pinning him to the ground where he stands. Medric. How bad does the crystal look? Uh, this one, uh, looking pretty rough. It was solidly wrong just a moment ago. The other one is even worse shape. The one that the yellow one that uh, Annie has been attacking. All right, I'll take a swing at the crystal because I saw Silas do it. So I'm assuming he's understood what we have to do. Okay, you see uh, the the uh, woman inside looking a uh, little encouragingly, but also fearful at the same time. Do I have to make an attack roll at it, or because it's standing mm -hmm. there? Yep, the attack is to determine if it's a critical there's, fail, critical success, or just a normal one. There's a That's 12. a nor normal hit, so go ahead and do your damage. What are you attacking it with? Warhammer. Okay. It uh, collides with the side of it. Uh, this time, the, the, the cracks that are spidering up through it uh, start to let loose large chunks, little diamond-shaped chunks that fall out of it. Uh, the, the top of it sort of cracks and, and leans a little bit. It looks like one solid hit will probably take it out at this point. Okay. And so the yellow one is also in really bad shape? Yes. I'll move the spiritual up and towards it. Okay. And it will take a swing at the crystal. Dirty 20. Oh, yeah. That's definitely a hit. Or four damage. Not quite as solid a hit as you might need, but you can now see large chunks of this are falling away. And in fact, you can see the, the guardsman uh, from about the mid-torso upward revealed from it. Um, he seems to be uh, quite surprised at this uh, and is trying to uh, hammer away at the thing from the inside as well. But he has no weapon with him. And I'll move the spiritual weapon back to try to, like, draw the attention of some worms, maybe. <laughs> okay. Um, Annie? Um, I'm going to continue to swing at this, uh, this thing. The okay. crystal. Uh, that's a natural 18. That's definitely a hit. Uh, that is max damage, so 8. So you find just the right point to drive Vice home. It glows slightly, weirdly enough, uh, and you can feel with just a little twist the whole base of the crystal kind of fall away, uh, and the guardsman stands there before you. It was an honor to serve beside... And he vanishes before he finishes his sentence. The room shivers and shakes once more. Well, that's interesting... Um, do you have a move or a bonus to do? Uh, no, because I used my steady. Okay. Uh, them. Uh, let's see. This guy does not want to be in the position he's in, so he's going to try to wriggle away from this thing. He's currently pinned underneath it and trying desperately to not be pinned underneath it. That does not do it. He's still pinned. Uh, the woman in the hole is going to try to climb out of the hole. Manages to do so and finds herself deposited on one side of it. Uh, he's unconscious, so it's back to Silas. You're muted. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, well... Yeah, Silas will smash the crystal okay. and keep his bonus action open in case. Thirteen to hit, 
Total of 11 damage. Uh, and once again, the, the thunder kind of rolls and crashes through it. This time, the crystal kind of shatters off in all directions, vanishing quickly as it does, leaving standing behind it the figure of Molly. She kind of flinched for a moment as the, as the, the, uh, the, the cracks had formed and the, the damage was being done, but now realizing that there's a moment, she steps down from the crystal and walks to Silas. She steps and puts her hands on both sides of your face. They feel warm, but somehow distant. We'll see each other again soon. Keep looking. I'm not as far away as I might seem. Then you are not gone? You have never let me go. But I am between. I love you. And she kind of leans up, kisses you on the side of the cheek, and it feels warm and real. And in that instant, she vanishes. Uh, Medra could be close enough to see that uh, uh, yes, Silas has tears rolling down his face. He says, uh, I love you too. Uh, and then with his bonus action, he's going to try to grab onto the uh, half-orc guy just in case the room disappears. Okay. And with the third crystal smashed, with a third past put behind you, you hear a chuckle come from Riva. Good, very good. You've faced your past and your fears. For as much as I count, you have succeeded. Now quickly make your way to the exit. Not all is as it seems here, as you might have gathered. Some dangers are beyond our control. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, That's see. a real safe haunted house, bud. We do what we can. As one of the worms starts diving towards you. Um, you do sort of feel the rumbling in the room, and it feels like a, a, a steady shaking now, like an earthquake that's sort of slowly building. Um, and the bits and pieces of the room as you knew it, know it are kind of sliding in towards the holes, losing some of their form, but falling into the holes, which themselves seem like they're both simultaneously, it's weird to experience, they're getting larger and they're getting smaller at the same time. Um, so the rest of the worms, uh, let's see, she's just going to book, actually, she's going to try to help pull this worm off. Uh, ah, come on, they're not so bad once you get to know them. and yanks the worm off of the poor guy, kind of throwing it backwards, uh, and for flavor, throws it backwards into one of the holes, which it, it gracefully kind of dives into and vanishes. Be gone. Another worm off to her side. Um, this one is going to try to attack Riva again. <laughs> oh, that's a crit. <laughs> So it dives forward and actually sinks its its claws over the massive eye of Riva. Go worm! Who this time does Look not in the eyebrow. Uh, uh, does not just chuckle, but in fact uh, yells with rage. I'll, he'll be having a turn a little bit later on. I I, I roll a one at containing my laughter at this. <laughs> uh, let's see. This one's going to slide forward and go after. Uh, Silas. Uh, and 11 doesn't hit, I don't think. Uh, and nope. now that he needs a turn, uh, Reva, which of these things does he want to do? Zap. Uh, Yeah, you see several of his eyes push forward. 
uh, at the stalks around the larger eye uh, and all sort of aim towards the central thing. Let's see here. This would be funny. Uh, that is not enough. So just for fun. Wait, uh, shoot. I had it right in my mind and then it disappeared. As the rays converge and burn <laughs> away the little worm out of existence very, very quickly. It doesn't even have a chance to sort of disgorge its acid upon death. It is literally in, annihilated. Uh, and you can see the little little, little uh, tick marks around its eyes where uh, Riva was not pleased with this outcome. Uh, that is those guys. It is... Uh, whoops, did I go too far? As the worms should be Medric's turn. Yeah. Yeah. Warhammer to the worm's face. Okay. Technically to its side because its face yeah. is currently attached to your back. I won't give you disadvantage on that roll, but it's kind of amusing to kind of go. <laughs> Smack. Dirty Smack. 20. Oh, yeah. No problem. Fox eggs, four damage. Yeah, at this angle, it's hard to get enough uh, leverage to really properly smack the thing. Uh, and it's got a good hold on you at the moment. Spiritual weapon, 18 to hit. All right, no problem. Four, seven damage. It's the combination of your flailing and this thing's flailing. It's making it hard to get a solid connection, but uh, it's it's slowly being beaten away. Uh, let's see. You know, it's these guys. Um, these two are going to beat feet. So, in fact, those two run to the exit and vanish through it. Uh, let's see. He's down again, so he's not going to move. Silas, you're up. And this one, this worm that's in front of you is actually kind of uh, rolling over the bo body of that half-orc who's once again been struck down. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Well, uh, Silas is going to cast Cause Fear into the minds of all three of the worms since they're within 30 feet of each other. Okay. It's a wisdom save against 14. Wisdom save doesn't seem like a likelihood. So we're going to start with, <laughs> uh, let's start with the one that's standing over the orc. Uh, 11, what did you say it was? 14. Okay. So that one will be a feared. The one that's attached to, to Medric got a three, so it's even more for a feared. And the one that's slowly catching up on things. Oh, crits got an 18. Um, so. Okay. So the other two, and I'll mark them off here with a little color just for fun. Let's go blue. They're scared blue. I have no idea what that means. Uh, and I'm assuming they are now frightened. Yep. Uh, I think as long as they can see me, then they're frightened. Okay. That was your uh, action. You can move or bonus. Is there anything left to the crystal? Small chunks. He'll the grab large, one. The sort of large part of it left that's still attached to the base. I'll just grab a small piece of one. Okay. Yeah, I did the same thing too earlier. Okay. Um, the that's holes it for, for him. begin to increase in size. Uh, as you note, several of them starting to distort and grow larger. No pressure. Mm-hmm. Oops. Wrong one. Yeah, Silas will be able to get to the exit, or wherever it is we're supposed to go. I yep. think it was the exit. The map. Yeah. <laughs> 
earthquake. <laughs> That's how dangerous this is getting, as the entire thing is starting to engulf the universe. Now, where was the exit? The upper Up right here. hand corner. Whoops. Okay, I see it now. I thought it was a hole. Yeah, I, I only noticed like eight turns after it came up or, yeah, or a lot in, of turns in, after. In retrospect, I should have chosen a different color paddle, but I was in a rush. Um, all right. There, as they start to expand. Uh, the two worms that were afraid, uh, the one that was standing over the body jumps into the hole and vanishes. Yay. Because it got us uh, scared of something. Uh, the one that is attached to Medric will try to get away. Uh, but I'm not stopping. <laughs> it has a problem. It has attached itself to you. And in fact, it's difficult to, to detach itself. Uh, can I give and, it advantage and push it off? Uh, sure. <laughs> you, can, you can sense that it wants to get away and you try to push it. And, and it's indeed, disgusting acid breath. It, it is. I have creepy crawlies. Of, Probably because again it's kind of attached. I'm, I'm imagining kind of to your back shoulder blade, taking the the uh, the the mace and now trying to just sort of scrape it off of your back. And sure enough, with that extra leverage, uh, it does manage to dive into the hole. Uh, and once more, uh, once again, you see it. Uh, and in fact, from your perspective, actually, both of you would have noticed that when it kind of dives into the hole, it becomes a controlled motion once it gets about halfway through. Almost as though that is its natural space to be in. Uh, the other one is not uh, not bothered, so it's going to try to attack Medric because you're the closest. Okay. This one is not a furred. Uh, Seventeen to hit. Nope. Okay, it misses. Uh, not attacked for once. Not attached for once, I should say. <laughs> Medric. You can see these holes are starting to grow larger, and it's almost as though the world is disintegrating around you. So I should make a motion that he's going to sort of slowly drift over, unconcerned by things. H. All right, I'll cast Healing Word on the half-orc that's dangerously close to the hole. Okay. So he gets four eight points. All right. He once again regains consciousness. Looking quite worse for wear, a little bit paler perhaps, and then sort of realizing that the, the hole where he just crawled out of is crawling after him. Run for the exit. And spiritual weapon will take a swing at the worm. Okay. Ah, 19 to hit. Definitely hit. Hey, max damage. Nice. Thwack. Uh, as it kind of, it, it kind of <laughs> skitters over and <sighs> makes a leap at you and falls a little bit short and then plank out of, out of, out of shot and then falling quickly into the shot is the uh, spiritual weapon, the the, the blazing uh, hammer that, that clunks it in, in, well, it has no head, but if it did, it would have gotten hit in it. I hope it's, it broke like at least three of its teeth. It, it sort of. Again, not really teeth on the outside, it's more just cl clasping claws to try to grapple on. Uh, and well, I hope it broke a nail. <laughs> <laughs> um, with, uh, with 90 feet of of movement, if I do an action and a bonus action dash, I would like to uh, dance my way safely around to get to the exit. I think that's pretty easy with 90 feet of movement, so uh, as you kind of... Uh, the only problem is you will come within range of the worm here. Which will oh, I'm fine. At you. Uh, can I... Let's see. Uh, let's... That... Not where I wanted to go. Uh, in the hole is not where I want to be. <laughs> As you dive you straight into the hole and Mark has to go, oh, okay. Uh, I believe with that, I can actually get it in uh, 60 feet, so I will use the disengage. Okay. 
as a kind of uh, daisily, in the cartoon way, you can kind of imagine the the birds and other things swimming above its head as you kind of uh, kind of dodge towards it, if you will. Uh, and it takes a lazy swipe, but you're not there any longer. You're in the after image, and you dive. See y'all in a bit. Bye. Yep. Okay. Uh, actually, I I will. I'm all. You gonna what? Sorry. Oh uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll go in the hole. I'll I'll say you guys better be on the other side, or else I'll kill you when you get here. Okay. Other side of the <laughs> exit, or <laughs> I'm assuming yes. you meant the exit hole. And that yes. was the last thing that Annie ever said to them. And maybe she regrets that in the future. <laughs> uh, I will beat you if you don't end up on the other side. I have to go find you. I will beat you to an inch within your end life. Okay. Um, I'm having scrolling issues. Sorry. Uh, that is Annie. Uh, those two have already left. This guy is going to try to make his way through. He does not have quite as an adept uh, trip to make, so he's going to try to just run, and the worm will definitely try to attack him on the way. Didn't it, didn't it already take an opportunity to attack at Annie though? Um, no, no, she just engaged. So it doesn't okay. have an opportunity to do so. Uh, it does have an opportunity to do so for him. Let's see if it gets attached to him. That would be, oh, yep, 20. Uh, that that hits him. And actually, uh, he doesn't have enough hit points to move any further as he's taken down once more. Well, he hasn't. He still hasn't used his uh, half-orc ability yet. Yeah. That's true. That's true. I might as well allow that to finally happen as I've now finally remembered that he should have done that four times ago. Uh, <laughs> Save me but, some spell points. <laughs> but as he runs along, uh, it is attached to him, and now everything is difficult terrain for him to move along. Um, so he'll only make it there and drag this worm with him. Um, that is his turn. Uh, Silas. Okay. Uh, Silas will... Run over to here, uh, switch the hex to it, and uh, take a swing. Yeah. 11 to hit. Uh, 11 unfortunately misses. Mm -hmm. As you're chasing after this streamer of a worm that's attached to this running, screaming half orc who's barely alive. Then I'll move back five feet so. Uh, Medric can run through. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. This worm is going to try to make an attack at the one it has held. Uh, it does so. And he goes crumpling underneath it. Because the one hit point is great unless you're actually in the middle of combat. <laughs> and it sort of coils over him. Actually, no, it's still attached. Uh, it starts to try to drag him towards the hole. Uh, how about no? Medrick, you're up. One, two, three, four. I will take a swing at the worm. Okay. Ha! Eight. Fuck. Uh, eight is a miss. Uh, it's still kind of, you're trying to hold back a little bit so you don't hit the half orc it has engorged in, in, in its jaws. The spiritual weapon will take a swing at the worm. Okay. Twelve. Twelve hits. Yay. That, that okay. just barely hits. D8. It takes nine damage. Okay. It still has a hold, but it's halted in its movement. Um, Annie is in a for formless void. Uh, he's not doing anything. Silas. Okay. Silas will go through uh, that hex and again take a swipe at the, at the worm. Actually, mm, safer thing is he's going to uh, say a um, healing word uh, for the orc. So he regains 
uh, plus three, so six hit points. And then he's going to grab onto the orc and try and keep the uh, worm from pulling him into the hole with his action. Okay, so tug of war with the worm. All right. Uh, it is the worm's turn. So it is a tug of war. Um, athletics or acrobatics versus uh, it's just sheer strength, I think, at this point. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, you rolled an eight, it rolled a five. <laughs> uh, you have managed to hold it in place. Uh, it makes no further movement. Uh, Medric. Take a swing at the worm again and hopefully roll higher than eight. I'll say you get an advantage because it's uh, it's currently basically being held in place. Well, that more. 14 is better than... Well, the base 9 is better than the base 1, so 14, 14 That's definitely true. It's 14 hits. Smack! 9 damage. 9 damage. Okay. Spiritual weapon. Or does it have to go? Or uh, Nope. No, it's it turns already over. All right. So the worm's dead? No, no. The, the, the worm's still alive. Sorry. Okay. So yeah, spiritual weapon will roll. And again, Fuck. with advantage, because it's being held. Right. 14. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Like that advantage, it prevents a lot of ones. <laughs> Eight damage. Okay. Still alive. Damn it. Any in a formless void. Um, this creature, however, is going to try to detach, uh, or rather, this half-orc is going to try to uh, detach the worm uh, with advantage because of the tug-of-war. And manages to pull the worm free from it. That makes it sound like the worm was the thing that needed to be free. Um, it's essentially holding on to Silas at this moment. And he can't move because he's being held on to by Silas. So Silas. Uh, I am going to try to uh, pull the half-orc further from the edge uh, and yeah uh. Yeah, that'll be it. Okay. I'll just basically drag the orc over here. Oops, okay. can't move the orc. The worm will take a snipe at you because you're right there. Sure. Uh, 12, I don't think, hits, though. Nope. Okay. Uh, and on its turn, it sees that it's lost its quarry and dives into the hole and vanishes. Can I take an opportunity attack? You certainly can. Fuck. Eh, nuts. Uh, unfortunately, that's not quite enough. As it swims down into in through the hole. With nothing else causing you any limitations, it's easy enough for all of you to pass through the, uh, the exit. Um, I'm not passing through the exit yet. Okay. We got one question left. All right. Yeah. What, are, what are you doing? The, the, the place is disintegrating around you. Mm -hmm. uh, he's next to the exit, and he looks over at the beholder and uh, just asks, uh, what would have happened to anyone who fell into the void? Beats me. That's not part of our trick. Then this is not part of that? I've never seen this happen before. But as I've said, this place responds to the people who come in. This was all created for you. Interesting, isn't it? Hmm. Right. Goes to the portal. Me too. Okay. Uh, and I'm just going to line you guys up so I can pull them all over. I don't really need to do it. But basically, you end up and appear in uh, that same small room. You began through. Uh, it's as though there's a third door which has opened up in that space, uh, and you step through and arrive, finding Annie there only seconds before you left. 
almost as though time does not work in the normal way here. Uh, and standing before you, uh, you see Tauzek Rifa. Um, the signs of whatever that thing had done to him are gone, as if he had never been attacked at all. Very good, very good. You've faced your fears and come out triumphant, except for you. And he points at the the human uh, who called for an exit. And, of course, those in your cohort. But never fear, we are but generous here, and you've had your thrill today. So we will still reward you, nonetheless. And uh, wasn't it the half-orc that asked for the exit? It was just a human that took it? No, it was nope. the, yep. uh, the person who appeared here. Yeah, it was the human who actually asked for it. Okay. Um. All right, just putting my, my eyeball into the room. as I organize my thoughts. Um, it may seem like it was a other exercise, but it's actually me thinking for a moment there. Um, as the, the, uh, the beholder um, kind of gestures, and there's a bit of a lopsided, uh, maybe smarmy grin towards the three people who uh, were in the other cohort. Um, but I will reward you for your gallantry and your attempt to get through. Um, here, and uh, a small box materializes in midair in front of them. You can see that there are three small stones inside. Uh, each seem to have uh, uh, some sort of um, I guess you could it would be a, a, a representation of a die of a, of a single six-sided die on each of them. Here these little things will help you in future scrapes, I'm sure. Oh, and one ticket for prize each. And there was manifest in midair, holding in front of them. Um, the the uh, woman who is riding the worm uh, takes it, kind of smirks. I mean, this is my second prize. Those things are pretty fun. Uh, the guy who was just running, or the woman who was just running, uh, takes the stone cautiously and kind of... Pull it, puts it between your thing, fingers and kind of rubs it a little bit. Huh, okay. And the half orc kind of uh, kind of grunts. Do I get to keep the axe? No, I'm afraid you do not. Eh, cheap axe anyway. He whips it and it kind of clang hits hits the wall and and holds on. <laughs> uh, now you may all leave. Oh, and it would be kind of you to tell others that you had a terrifying experience. And remind them that it is unique at that. And they all kind of nod. And the, uh, the, the woman who called for the exit kind of uh, grimaces a little bit and walks out. The half-orc no longer seems wounded. In fact, all of you find you have no wounds. That's good. Clothing is no longer torn. Uh, and... Uh, and uh, you still expended the energy you had before, but those are that is otherwise uh, uh, otherwise fun. Um, now, as for the rest of you, that was unexpected. Our little entertainment here never seems to attract that sort of peril or thrill, but the three of you proved to be quite interesting. I've never seen that before. Well, we've seen some things that most people would find scary already. Ah, I wish to hear these stories sometime, if I'm ever allowed to. But alas, this is my own prison, and I rarely get a chance to be among the, the living all that long. How did you become imprisoned here? No, oh, that is a long and torturous story, and you have no further questions left that I am obligated to answer. 
Well, not no, obligated. Just... What if you just wanted to answer out of your own, like, desires to answer again? No, but I'm not allowed to keep you here that long. They would frown upon it, you see. I've tried before. It goes very, very badly for the people who stay behind. All right. Uh, what happened to Catheron or the, the Sphinx that fell through the hole? We don't have any questions left. Yeah, I know, but maybe that's a shorter answer that he might be willing to answer. <laughs> it is a part of the answer which might have come for your friend there. You see, that was never supposed to happen. Those holes were never supposed to appear. In fact, in many theories, there should be no possibility of them appearing at all. It would appear that something of the three of you has attracted quite a bit more attention than we ever bargained for. I found it quite exhilarating. You see, what was out there is far beyond the scope of what is in here. As far as I can tell, something sensed you were here and decided to get a closer look. That large thing, I believe it's called an aboleth, but an unusual one. Not an earthly bound one, but one bound to the void between worlds, which I believe was on the other side of those holes. As for Cathron, as you called her, well, that is difficult to say for she was only partially here to begin with. So I suspect she may only be partially gone. Or maybe now, through some twisted interaction of magic, she is in fact in two places at once. How intriguing. Yeah, you know, this, this, this chat is probably the most terrifying part of this experience. Uh, thanks, I guess. Oh, you're too kind. It's such words that bring me back to life once more. But we all travel through this world through our own paths. No one will ever face the combination of things that you did. In fact, those other three who are on an entirely different journey, I think got a bonus for their ride. Maybe I shouldn't have been so generous with prizes after all. But if you are feeling generous towards our little enterprise, tell everyone you meet that it was a harrowing but worthy experience, and we'll all benefit from this, yes? Uh, sure, just, you know, in what way? The holes. Well, you see, I have within me the capacity to let you have prizes. And after such a performance, I am eager to reward. But I have to know that this little enterprise continues. Willoweth would be so devastated to find out that things have gone a little bit wrong, or a little bit right, depending on your perspective. I will say, though, that no one's faced this sort of poor peril before. Perhaps it is because you are so powerful that the house decided you needed a bigger challenge. I fear I shall not see such a thrill for quite some time again. Well, who knows if we need more prizes? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I am afraid this place can only be entered once. Something about the universe falling apart, or the house not having a really good response to trying to change things dramatically. After all, if it were the same thing twice, it would hardly be as thrilling, would it? I thought the other lady said she came in here previously. The one who was riding the worm. I, I think she was more talking about the fun of having rid the worm was prize in itself, this is a second prize. You are correct. She was not anticipating a thrill ride such as that. Nor was I, frankly. Well, uh, rewards? Indeed. 
As before, and once again boxes manifest in front of you, we will give you the base prize as a starter. And there is indeed a small stone with what looks like an inscribed six-sided die on it. Uh, and a small piece of paper, which does look to be one of the ticket uh, prize, uh, prize tickets, I should say. And now, for the real prizes. You may pick from one of these four, and a second pick from another group. Manifesting in front of you, kind of hovering in midair. There is a, a short stick. It looks to be about eight inches long, about <laughs> a half an inch around. Um, this is one. A small ring floats in front of you as well that seems to have a captured wave, or what looks like it, in a small uh, gem on top. A rope dangles from the ceiling and stands still. And then whizzing around the room, thwop, 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 and then kind of stopping just in front of the, uh, the beholder is what looks like a, 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 a bent, flattened stick. He explains. This small stick fits well in a pocket, but at a word, becomes so much more. And he utters a word, and the small stick extends out to ten feet. It is, in fact, a pole of collapsing. This ring might be of especial use to this seaside port town. I hear you have much water out there. It's a shame I can't see it from here. It is a ring that gives you the ability to swim like a fish. A ring of swimming. This rope is not as durable as your own, but it will help you to get where you need to go. And he utters a word, and the rope uh, ties itself in multiple knots. It is a rope of climbing. And finally, should you need to face things at distance, this little device is quite useful among the Asurans. And it is a boomerang plus one. Now, you may take a moment to think about those. I will tell you about another boon, a prize from these three things. They are all in this wardrobe, which just sort of suddenly appears and opens itself up. From out of it, one of the things it appears to be a cloak that stands in midair and then seems to sway in an invisible breeze. It is a cloak of billowing. A second one comes out. And it looks like something Annie would have seen at court. Very, very formal. And then it changes to something of a ragged, rough street, uh, street clothing. And then it changes again to be a dark black silk. It is a cloak of many fashions. Mine. And then the third one comes out. And it, uh, it, it appears to be a well-suited set of clothing. This one you will have a choice for. You can make it look like whatever you wish once. Once established, it will never steer you wrong. They are clothes of mending. So one of each of these pools can be yours. Or, if you're willing to forego those little stones and your prize tickets and your choices... I do have one thing that might prove very useful to people such as yourselves, people with destinies and whom touch so many things and need to keep them at hand. It is a simple bag, but so much more. And he presents you with the option of foregoing all the prize tickets, the stones, which are stones of good luck. They basically are a charm that provides you a one, uh, one chance reroll, and then they're done. Uh, choice from the two prize bonuses, all of that for a bag of holding. So the practical player in me is like, bag of holding is worth so much. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> but also, there are some interesting other things. Uh, so it's for the group, we get one choice. For the group, you get one choice from each of the bundles. Yeah. And then you get the stones of good luck and the prize tickets. Uh, the stones of good luck, do they recharge every day or are they like one use only? They're, they're a one use item. Okay. They're the consolation prize that they gave to the other group as well. Right. Um, so as he suggested, it will get you out of trouble once, which is if you fail, that's what you kind of need. Um, well, I have no use for fancy cloaks. I mean, aside from the one time at the upcoming party. I mean, a cloak of many fashions is really, really useful uh, as a rogue uh, getting into places. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Silas is already wearing it. <laughs> yeah. He's There's prancing around. And... But re realistically, like, bag of holding is really good. Would we still get the, the ticket? No. No. Okay. It's giving up everything. Um, what would we be interested in option uh, in the first option group? Like, yeah, there's ten foot pole, ring of swimming. So the pole of collapsing specifically. So it does shrink down yep. to about an eight inch thick. Ring of swimming, rope of climbing, or boomerang plus one. And a boomerang does come back to you if you throw it. During this um, discussion, I'll pass Annie the rope back that I borrowed earlier. Okay. Like the unbreakable rope. Okay. Yeah. And the second All right, group well, was cloak of billowing, cloak of many fashion, fashions, or clothes of mending. Yeah. And the clothes of mending, basically, you have a choice as to what they look look like, and then they always stay like that. In the presentation so it's here, like, they seem to shift and change. Cool. So it's uh, like what Agus has in the other campaign. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, except you'd get, basically, you'd get to choose what it looks like once. You could make this like your official church uniform and make it look like whatever you wanted to do. Yep. Eh. Can I make it look like plate armor? <laughs> it, it can look like it. Damn it. It doesn't do anything uh, for you, but it looks like it. Um, craft foam plate armor. <laughs> it kind of reminds me, actually, of those those t-shirt uh, tuxedos. All right. <laughs> that's, that's how much plate armor it is. <laughs> um. But yeah, uh, I am indifferent in which, if we go for the the one of the two option groups, uh, I would vote the cloak of many fashions. Um, but, but I'm not interested in anything from option from the first option group, and I think that ultimately the bag of holding would be the more useful. Are we making this choice for each of us, or are we choosing... It, it is one choice for the group. Yes. Okay, so the group gets a bag of holding, or the group gets a cloak and something else. Yeah. That's right. Okay. You will get three prize tickets if you choose to go that way, because there will be one prize ticket and one stone of good luck for each of you. Hmm. Silas takes off the cloak and puts it back. Yeah. I mean what what is does a what is a boomerang classified under for equipment? Um, that's a good question. I believe it is under martial weapons. Uh, Maybe either martial or exotic. Actually if you have um if you have proficiency in thrown weapons like a dart, that would count. Okay. Uh, I mean, sorry, uh, javelin is what they actually talk about. Okay. Uh, well, looking at it, uh, I'm, I'm just going to add it to my inventory here to see if I am proficient. I am proficient in it, but it's just another D4 damage item. It is a magical weapon and does return to you if you miss. So, a yeah. little, bit, little bit better than and that. It's a, and it's a plus one. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, if if that's what we go with, I would say that's the better option of those four, because it's actually useful. Keeping in mind that you, with prize tickets, you can potentially get most of these things, except for a bag of holding, but it does require numerous prize tickets. 
Yeah. Um, the cloak of billowing he was looking at before requires five prize tickets alone. Yeah. Well, I was looking at the cloak of fashions, but oh, yeah. sorry. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, the space seems more useful because we can all we can all use it. Yeah. Uh, I, I'd say the bag of, of holding and us getting more, more prize tickets to get whatever cloaks and stuff we want. I'm okay with that. Well, I think if we get the bag of holding, we don't get anything else. Right. Yeah. We don't get any prize tickets at but all. But you can go out and get from prize this. tickets from other things. Yeah. Right. Like, long-term, like, big brain life choices. Uh the other things look cool, but the bag of holding is probably the most useful and hardest to find again. Mm. Well, if you've got someone who collects stuff, yeah. Uh, Silas isn't, like, Silas would prefer the cloak, but if you want the bag of holding, then that's fine. We'll try to get the cloak some other way. Yeah, like, a Annie is also interested in the cloak, but also that that seems like a thing that's easier to find. Yeah. So have you made your decision? Silas will accept whatever Annie wants. Yeah, the bag looks cool. Uh, that That's not related to the holes we just encountered, right? Different I kind of hole? I sincerely hope not. That would be awful. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just, from a practical perspective, Annie's a very, fairly practical person. She's she's seen the cloaks before. She's seen the bags r more rarely. Okay. So you guys have chosen the bag of holding. Yep. Somebody roll me a d4. Uh, I Who can do it? that. Yeah. Now that is a four. Okay. Good choice, and all of them vanish. I can offer you the stones and prize tickets here, but the rest is outside of my domain. It seems Willoweth does not trust me with other such things. It's a shame, really. I could do such damage with them. I mean good, of course. When you see Willoweth, the mysterious, tell him this. You cannot soar with the eagles if you hang out with the turkeys. You know what you mean. And he sort of gestures, and behind you, you see another cave entrance, much like the one you saw before, that says exit over top. Now, please, make your way out, and may you never be as frightened as you were here, because then I'll have to improve my game. What is it? You cannot soar with the eagles, something, something, turkey. If you hang out with the turkeys. You cannot soar with the eagles if you hang out with the turkeys. So that's a walkout. Okay. Cool. I'll give, like, cheers to the beholder and walk out, too. <laughs> Be seeing you. Um, as you pass out through the doorway, you find yourself in that simple uh, paneled hallway, the canvas of the original tent the sound of the outside world comes rushing back in and you realize how quiet it was inside there behind you the the darkness vanishes you step out and there's a crowd that's joined and willoweth proudly proclaims look it's more people here to have celebrated welcome i'm i thank you so much for your participation it's just such a shame that Ah, the house overcame you in the end. Now, if you'll please tell all your friends to come down and enjoy, I'm sure that we'll be seeing you again around the carnival. I very calmly say, you cannot soar with, with the eagles if you hang out with the turkeys. And his face expression kind of drops. What? No. I, I, <laughs> that's not... I repeat it. <laughs> well... Uh... It seems as though these three truly are heroes after all. And you see behind him, uh, he kind of turns and writes on a little chalkboard, survivors, three. 
um, goes to a little piece a parchment that he has. He kind of unrolls it, crosses off a line, <sighs> turns, st- steps off of the crate he'd been using as his as his uh, stand, opens it up, leans way way into it, and then produces a bag. Describe to me what your bag of holding looks like. And this will be the note we'll end on today because I do have to end here pretty quick. I mean... It can look like a simple sack or it can look like a fancy uh, over-the-shoulder bag. It can look like uh, a... uh, a, I don't know. What would you like it to look like? If you just want to look like... Like a satchel? Yeah, just... uh, I mean... Yeah, a, 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 a satchel. Okay. Uh, Something not too fancy looking, so nobody's going to, like, go steal it. <laughs> yeah. Sturdy. Okay. Um, as he brings out this, this sturdy-looking leather bag, um, just a moment, and he opens up the, the crate, and he kind of tips the bag out, and you hear crash and bang as several things fall out and into his crate. And then he kind of closes his crate with a little bit of effort, as it seems overly stuffed now. Here you go. Fair is fair is fair. I'm going to have to talk with that, Riva. Enjoy. And thank you for enjoying our our haunted house of mirrors. I'll ask uh, Silas and Annie, uh, should should we tell them about what happened in the last room? Maybe later? Pretty sure Tao is actually the one in charge of this. He trundles over to the entrance of the, uh, the canvas hallway pulls down a flap and it says uh, out of business for today please come back <laughs> tomorrow <laughs> and that's where we're going to end it for today because I have uh, another pressing engagement unfortunately uh, I want to thank my players for indulging me in this weird little uh, idea that I had and the weird little twist that I decided to throw in uh, and uh, there will be questions that you might have in your mind you also have met a creature who might be able to answer questions that you have if you can ever get back to Riva again uh, and uh, for those of you watching at home, thank you for joining us. For those of us watching, those of you watching on YouTube, thank you as well. Remember, you can see it on YouTube, youtubecom slash ENCAF1. Uh, new episodes come out on Sunday to Monday evenings, depending on whether I've got a chance to do it or not. Uh, also live on Sundays at three o'clock Atlantic time. So do enjoy all of that. Uh, and uh, no game next week. I'm going to be attending Balticon. I'm rather excited to attend virtually still, but you know, it's technically something different, even though my room is not going to change at all. And (laughs) I have to figure out if I'm really taking a time off, but that's okay. I'll manage. And then we'll be back in June with our next episodes. Thanks folks for playing. I'll see you guys. Thanks for running. See you. See ya.